Welcome to the seventh video on first order modelling. This video is going to look at time constant forms. Now, just repeat here, we're going to look at analogies between first order models, in particular when we're considering a time constant form. You will notice that there is some crossover with the videos on first order responses, so you may want to look at those videos in parallel. The particular focus uh, of this video is to show that all the first order models uh, we've derived in this set of videos can be represented in an equivalent format and by doing that it allows a better understanding of the analogies between the systems. So this is the type of equation we're going to use. You'll notice we've got a standard first order model here and we've written it in what is called a time constant form. So capital T dx dt plus x equals ku. And the key thing to notice here, if I write it, is the coefficient of x is 1. So that's what you need to do to get into time constant form. You need to make the coefficient of the state 1 and then let the other coefficients be whatever they are. So when we do that, this is what we'll get. We'll get this particular coefficient here, capital T, which multiplies the derivative. And that capital T is called the time constant. And as you will see from the other videos on responses, that tells you something particular about how quickly the state x responds. You will also have this other coefficient in here, capital K, which multiplies on the input to the system. And it can be shown that that capital K is the steady state gain of the system. So it has a real meaning as well. Now, again, a reminder, if you look at the videos on first order responses, you will see a bit more discussion on exactly how these T and K affect the behaviours of the corresponding system. Let's look then at some of the systems that we've derived earlier on in this set of videos. What we're going to do is look at how we can take those models and put them in this desired time constant form T dx dt plus x equals ku. So first taking the heating system where we had a heat flow going into some form of block and that was this equation we've got down here and what we're going to do is make this coefficient here which multiplies on the state we're going to make it 1. In order to do that, we need to multiply the whole equation throughout by capital C. And then you'll get this. You'll see CKH dt2 dt plus t2, you'll see the coefficient there is 1, equals t1. What about the uh, spring damper system then, which we've got here? Again, you'll remember from the early videos, this was the model we derived, B dx dt plus kx equals f. And if I want to put that into time constant form, I've got to get rid of this k here, which is multiplying on the x. And in order to do that, I've got to divide the whole equation by k. So this is what you get. b of a k dx dt plus x, again you'll see the coefficient of that is 1, equals 1 over k times f. What about the resistor capacitor then? Well, again, if you look at the earlier videos, you'll see this was the model we had, R1 dQ dt plus 1 over CQ equals V. And if I want to put that into time constant form, I can multiply throughout by capital C, and this is what I'll get, CR1 times dQ dt plus Q equals CV. Two more examples to look at then, the mass damper and the resistor inductor. So first, the resistor inductor. Here's the model we derived earlier. L di dt plus i times r1 equals v. And you'll see that if I divide throughout by r1, I get L over r1 di dt plus i equals 1 over r1 times v. So again, here you'll see the coefficient of i on its own is just 1. So in this case, that will be t and that will be k. And here's the mass damper. So again, this is the model we derived in the earlier videos. The force equals m dv dt plus bv. If I divide throughout by capital B, I get 1 over b times f equals m over b dv dt plus 1 times v. A summary then. Let's look at all these equations which we've just derived. 
So for the resistor inductor, we had L over R1 di dt plus I equals 1 over Rv, and so you'll see the time constant is L over R1, and the gain is 1 over R1. For the mass damper, we had 1 over Bf equals M over B dv dt plus V, so the time constant is M over B, and the gain is 1 over B. For the resistor capacitor, we had CR1 dQ dt plus Q equals CV, so the time constant is C times R1, and the gain is C. For the spring damper, we had B over K dx dt plus X equals 1 over Kf, so the time constant is B over K, and the gain is 1 over K. And for the thermal system, down here at the bottom, we had a time constant C times Kh, and a gain of 1. Let's look at the summary now in a bit more detail, and in particular, let's look at the analogies between all these systems. So you'll notice what I've done first is I've summarized all the time constants and all the gains for these systems. And we'll group them now and see if it tells us something about the similarities in the systems. First of all, we're going to focus on these two. And you remember in the earlier videos, we said that there were some analogies between these two systems. So what do we notice? If we look at the equations for the time constant, what you'll notice is that if you change the damper, that's B, you'll see it affects the time constant and it affects the steady state gain. And you'll notice it has exactly the same impact as the resistor. It appears in exactly the same position in the equation for the time constant and the equation for the steady state gain. So the impact of changing the resistor or changing the damper is exactly analogous in terms of how it affects the time constant and how it affects the gain. If you then look at the other parameters in the system, that is the inductor and the mass, again, you'll notice the mass and the inductor appear in corresponding positions and therefore have analogous effects on the time constant. But what is also interesting is you notice that neither of them have any effect on the capital K. All right, then, what about this next two? Um, systems. And again, you'll remember from the earlier videos, we showed that we expected these two systems to be analogous in some sense. And what do we notice? First, let's look at the capacitance and the spring constant. And you'll notice, here's the spring constant. It appears down here, affects the time constant. Down here, affects the steady state gain. It's in the denominator in both cases. And you'll see C, the capacitance, also affects appears in both equations. But in this particular case, in order to get a true analogy, you have to notice that the analogy is between k and 1 over c. Okay, so that's the true analogy. 1 over the capacitance is analogous to the spring stiffness. And then, again, if you look at the damper, B, and the resistor, R1, you'll see they appear in the same position. They both affect the time constant, but neither of them have any effect on the gain. So again, you can see that there's analogous behaviors between for different systems and also analogies between different components. So the resistor is analogous to the damper in terms of the impact it has, or the spring is analogous to the capacitor, or the mass is analogous to the inductor. So in conclusion, what we've shown is that changes in the parameters have easily understood impacts on the behavior of the system. So we can see very clearly how a change in a particular parameter may affect the time constant of a system, which tells us how quickly the system responds. We can also see how changes in parameters affect the steady state gain of the system. So this insight can be used for design and analysis. It gives us an explicit relationship we can use to say, I want this time constant. What do I need to do with the parameters? Or I need this steady state gain. What do I need to do with the parameters? So a simple example here, just to finish. Assume you had a mass damper system. What would happen to the behavior if the mass was doubled? Well, if we look, we'll notice the time constant was m over b, and the gain was 1 over b. So the gain is not affected by the change in mass. And that's very clear. That's quite helpful. But the time constant is doubled, 
if you double the mass. So it tells us straight away that the speed at which this system responds is half as slow as it would have been with the original mass.